Next, I would like to welcome Peter Adam of Siemens Energy in Germany. Peter Adam joined Siemens AG in 1981 and has since held various positions in strategy, sales, business and market development. He has extensive experience in leading several international ventures and task forces in China and the Middle East. Based on his deep expertise in sustainable engineering solutions and his experience as head of hydrogen business at Siemens Oil & Gas, he took over the role of head of sustainable and hydrogen business development within Siemens Energy Industrial Applications in 2019. Peter's presentation is titled, The Future with Hydrogen, How to Make an Existing Natural Gas Infrastructure Fit for Hydrogen Operation. Welcome, Peter. Good afternoon. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, the title um, already mentioned, how existing natural gas infrastructure can be used for hydrogen operations. <clears throat> Just a little bit, a very complicated slide. I don't want to waste too much time on it. Today on this planet, roughly 75 MTBA of hydrogen is produced, typically near where it's consumed in ammonia production, um, refineries and so on. But uh, several thousand kilometers of hydrogen pipeline exist, some of it nearly 100 years. So basically hydrogen pipeline is not very near, not very new. Also, the distance for the pipeline um, where hydrogen is transported is not very long, roughly several hundred kilometers, typically less than 1,000. The idea of hydrogen blending is discussed and is possible, and I come to this later in the presentation. But before I continue, let's talk a little bit about hydrogen pipelines. Basically, transport hydrogen in pipelines is much more energy intensive than uh, natural gas uh, transportation, hence it's uh, fair to believe that we will not see very long hydrogen pipelines similar like today when maybe a uh, natural gas pipeline goes all the way from Yamal Peninsula to Europe and so on. This thousands of kilometers high time hydrogen transportation is very unlikely. It's more likely that hydrogen is transported within Germany over the borders and so on in distances uh, not more than 1000 kilometer in order to deal with uh, energy consumption of it. <clears throat> and of course, in this context as well, we need to talk about storage. Um, at least uh, the um, we have already several salt cover and storage facilities for hydrogen on this planet. So the technology is somehow proven. And in Germany, we can use the vast existing capacity of uh, salt cover and storage for hydrogen. And the only, yeah, the only thing to be done is basically to make the compression equipment ready for this. So that's basically for, for the entry. And of course, when we assume that in uh, 2050, the assumption is that the quantity of hydrogen uh, produced and transported on this planet is 10 times than today. A huge uh, pipeline network is required to transport all this energy. But just one word uh, on, on this. Uh, clear is many people may believe that um, hydrogen liquefaction could become a means for long distance transportation of, of hydrogen when the hydrogen is produced in remote areas. At the moment, it's not really likely because uh, to liquefy hydrogen consumes 20% of the energy content of the hydrogen itself. Maybe this can be reduced somehow, but it's definitely an extremely energy intensive process. So at least at the moment, it's unlikely that we will see this million MTBA liquid hydrogen uh, production as we have in the LNG side. So for long distance transportation at the moment, more, for example, a, a molecule like ammonia is considered as the energy hydrogen carrier because technology is available and can be used and uh, is there. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about hydrogen and its uh, yeah, behavior as a gas to be compressed because that needs to be taken into consideration when we use existing equipment and uh, pipelines. Hydrogen with a mole weight too is very challenging and energy intensive to compress. Existing turbo compressor technology, as we have it for natural gas, would require many, many uh, impellers in several casings to, to uh, get the uh, compression rate we have typically in pipelines. So basically it's done in the petrochemical industry, but I think for pipelines, this technology as we have it today is not suitable. Today, nearly all hydrogen produced is compressed with reciprocating compressors. Reciprocating compressors, by nature of how they work as positive replacement machine, will and have a much better energy efficiency to pump hydrogen because we need to keep in mind 
to pump hydrogen with a turbo compressor means you accelerate the molecule through the rotation of the impellers. And this, unfortunately, is less efficient the lower the mole weight is. So in this case, uh, basically, we have to take into consideration that the future energy requirements to pump hydrogen will be much higher than we have it on natural gas. We, we undertake study or we have undertaken study with pipeline operators that probably up to 750,000 norm cubic meter hydrogen flow. We can use recip compressors for weapon operations. This is equivalent to a more than two gigawatt electrolysis system. So it's fair to say that basically in the next five years where we will not see such large volume flow because uh, it will take time until such large um, hydrogen capacity comes on stream. Uh, we can deal all um, upcoming opportunities with reciprocating compressors that are basically in this uh, capacity available since nearly 100 years as well. We have uh, also for high pressure storage install covens, um, compressors available up to 300 bar discharge pressure, what is typically uh, the maximum operating pressure of those kind of uh, assault covens. When we talk about turbo compressors, we will need when the quantity of hydrogen goes up, we need uh, a tip speed of more than 700 meter per second for impellers to deliver a, ra a compression ratio that allow to bridge the typical pipeline compressor station pressure ratio, for example, from 50 to 90 bar within one single casing. This is, of course, uh, a development that is ongoing um, from us and all the other companies. It's on one hand, a material problem because clear is when the um, tip speed is increased, the centrifugal forces will increase uh, and the centrifugal stresses will improve and we have hydrogen brittlement taken into account. But I'm very confident that before we ever see the need to pump more than 750,000 norm cubic meters, this machinery will be available. So I expect we will have them um, uh, for usage ready in latest five years from now, maybe in four years from today. Okay, I think most of you may know this picture already. It's a uh, current planning of the hydrogen backbone to be established in Europe um, from the pipeline operators. And most of those pipelines will uh, be converted natural gas pipelines, maybe three quarters of it. Only a few new belts and also most of the storage is using existing. The question was, okay, what does it cost to do this? And in the studies undertaken, the conclusion was that basically to convert existing natural gas pipeline to hydrogen, the cost is only 10 to 15% of a new build pipeline because typically it's fair to assume you can keep the pipe because uh, first studies show that the problem, the potential problem of steel imprisonment in the pipe is not so big and therefore, it's fair to assume that uh, most of the pipes can be used without anything. Of course, then you need to look at the automation systems and measurement systems. But the cost is, is very moderate compared to a new build. And of course, we all know that long distance pipelines have a very high energy transportation capacity. And to look at this, it's very clear. People may believe due to the fact that hydrogen at the same pressure of, uh, of natural gas only have one third of the energy content that a hydrogen pipeline only have one third of the energy transportation capacity. But this is not true because hydrogen is flowing in the pipeline much easier than a methane molecule. But therefore, at the same time, you can pump three times the quantity of hydrogen through a pipe within the limitations of the operating pressure. That means a, a pipeline can have up to 90% of the energy transportation capacity compared to a natural gas pipeline. Of course, this means when you use the pipeline to the maximum of its capacity, you need much more compression power. Uh, on the other hand, when you fill a pipeline only partly with its flow due to the nature how the hydrogen molecules flow in the pipeline, you can bridge very long distances in a pipeline uh, with just one compressor station at the beginning. So it's, we can say when we use converted pipelines, we have a big pipe, we only can fill it to maybe 20% or something. You need only a small compression power and you can bridge very long distances. 
And then when you increase the capacity and the pipeline is filled, of course, we need more compression power. And then there comes a certain point when you need more compression power than in the compared volume flow of natural gas. And when you use the pipeline to its maximum of capacity, you need nearly three times the capacity. Okay. Um, one additional point I want to mention, of course, we talk about hydrogen, but please keep in mind when you make hydrogen, in particular green hydrogen, you automatically make eight times the quantity of oxygen. This oxygen is basically there. It's more or less free of charge and it will find its way to the market. So we expect therefore that in a couple of years, we also will discuss the issue of oxygen pipeline to use this oxygen in particular, probably for oxy fuel processes uh, to decarbonize industries. Uh, and also what the discussion that already has started is the issue of CO2 pipelines, also uh, using to extend possible existing pipes in the ground because carbon capture and storage is an issue that need to be explored because certain industry just need this technology to be decarbonized. And even in Germany, we see now the first projects where the government supports the idea to build hydrogen um, CO2 pipelines means also in a foreseeable future, we'll discuss not only converting of natural gas pipelines to hydrogen, but as well to CO2 and oxygen. Okay, coming to the compressor technology, Basically, as I pointed out, receive compressors are the machines of choice. We have roughly more than 1,500 units for hydrogen pumping in operation. Mainly, of course, today pumping gray hydrogen in ammonia processes, refineries, or wherever they are. Um, it's clear when we pump hydrogen, we differentiate between dry compression without lubrication of cylinders and lubricated, where we can achieve higher pressures. As far as we know at the moment, only if the gas is used for um, fuel cell operations, we need dry compression because clearly as we have there a very, very small decombination with oil particles, but respective standards on the quality of the hydrogen the pipelines does not exist yet. So we'll see what technology implications this may have. Um, but it's fair to say that this is a mature technology immediately available in case uh, something need to be done today. Okay, coming to the turbo compressors, we sell already turbo compressors for hydrogen applications, mainly in refining and petrochemical operations um, with high pressure and high content. But I repeat myself, this is sent typically 20, 30 impellers in three casings with a large steam turbine as driver, nothing you could put in a compressor station of a pipeline. So, therefore, those new uh, turbo compressor technology with high speed or high tip speed impeller is under development and I expect will be available latest in 2025. Okay, of course, um, blending is an issue. And a lot is discussed how much blending is going to happen. At least when I talk to pipeline companies, it seems to be, say, consider more, let's make a separate 100% uh, uh, hydrogen network to natural gas network. Nevertheless, we have looked at this and the conclusion is that up to roughly 10% of hydrogen content in a pipeline we do not need to do any changes, maybe look a little bit out of automation and, and, the, and the safety issues, but basically no changes are required on the rotating equipment. You lose, you lose a little bit performance due to the lower mole weight. Between 10 and 40% hydrogen content in the pipeline, you can keep the compressor casing basically and most of the auxiliaries, um, but of course, uh, hydrogen compatibility in particular for safety need to be considered. But you need to change the compressor bundle to optimize the performance for low mole weight, basically increase impeller diameter and higher speed. And then the hydrogen content exceeds 40%, you need a new compressor. Clearly, uh, project specific elevation need to take place, how old the machine is uh, and all the details. Um, uh, in the extreme case, maybe driver speed or gearbox need to be changed in order to get to higher speed. And probably recertification is respective uh, needed from the authorities, depending on outstanding regulations that are not yet there. Coming to the gas turbines as drivers, um, as you see here in the graph, that is our current capability map of our gas turbine fleet for hydrogen capabilities. It's quite high already, so it's fair to assume before you ever have enough hydrogen in your pipeline that we need 100% gas turbine driver, we will have 100% um, hydrogen capabilities in our gas turbines 
um, take into account all the, all the issues on NOx emissions and so on. So basically at the moment, I think this is a little bit weird um, because typically when we even offer this high content of hydrogen capabilities in the gas turbines, it's not needed because it's just not yet enough hydrogen available in, to be pumped. Also, of course, um, looking into the future, when the hydrogen content increases in the pipeline, uh, you want to secure uh, the, your assets. And it's very clear that the, the gas turbines can be upgraded in certain limitations uh, to hydrogen fuel. Of course, you first may sink at a combustor, but it has also other things, fuel gas system, automation system, uh, electrical auxiliaries, and so on need to be checked. But this is already under development and basically um, it's fair to assume that the typical installed uh, mechanical drive gas turbine in pipeline operations can be upgraded to the increasing hydrogen demand in the pipeline. Again, uh, certifications may be needed depending on outstanding legislation. And, and uh, clearly we need project-specific evaluations. Again, we may have machines that is 40 year old, other machines is five year old and so on. And the effort is, depends on what you really have in as a machine on board. Therefore, um, specific studies are required and we already have uh, started a dialogue in this context with operators. Okay, that's basically the end of my presentation and I'm ready for questions you may have. Thank you very much, Peter. Very interesting. <laughs> Great to see that uh, the infrastructure is, is pretty much ready and, and capable of handling this switch to hydrogen. Do, do you see any showstoppers at all? in repurposing from natural gas to no. hydrogen? Of course, clearly, as respective regulations need to be there, though the government has to do some homework. But as far as I know, the regulatory uh, authorities work on those standards. So I think latest next year, they should be available for hydrogen. And, and we also expect that the FID for the first projects of pipeline to be converted will probably happen already next year. Fantastic. Excellent. And you think maybe the, the big intercontinental transport is, uh, is a thing of the past, perhaps? I guess uh, hydrogen can potentially be produced more in different localities rather than relying on the geographic sources of natural gas that we're relying upon at the moment. So all the big projects where hydrogen is produced somewhere and, and the market is over this, uh, when that are really considering to do something in the upcoming years. At the moment, look at ammonia as a hydrogen energy core because it is a proven technology, all the infrastructure, the vessels, the technology is available. Um, so therefore, this is maybe the mainstream. Of course, I, I understand that the cryogenic companies and other players try to improve, uh, in particular, reduce the energy intensity of uh, the hydrogen liquefaction. Whether they succeed, how long it takes, I don't know. But uh, as far as I understood, not being a process engineer, there are physical limitations, taking into account that liquid hydrogen is minus 253 degrees or something. So you definitely need roughly maybe 13 or 14 percent that is just the physical limitations of the energy content and whether this at the end is economic or not future will show yeah it's great to see that there's a few different options on the table you yeah. mentioned ammonia as well we had we did have a question from thomas stark about that and i, I think you answered that nicely mm. so thank you again for the presentation i really enjoyed that okay thank you have a nice day bye bye thanks peter <laughs>